this is the typology uh, is very similar with uh, the previous presentation because you have crop, crop destruction, you have attack on domestic, domestic animal and human, you have a stream pattern with mud. Uh, I can say that for crop destruction, um, you will find that it is very high in the savanna zone because in Cameroon you have several ecological zones. Uh, but if you want to talk of uh, uh, human wildlife conflict in connection to great apes, you will, you will find it mostly in the forest area. Uh, I wanted to say something about the agriculture, agricultural sector because uh, it is clear that uh, the conflict is affecting, you know, uh, mostly farmers in the rural area. Uh, the agricultural sector in Cameroon represents almost 40% of the GDP. We have two planting seasons, uh, low productivity in lowland area. Uh, we, start, we are using already fertilizer, but the agricultural sector is not subsidized. Uh, the common practices, the, the common practice here is the slash and burn agriculture, which you know can degrade uh, the, forest, uh, the forest area. And we have huge importation of some commodities such as uh, rice. My colleague from uh, Asia here were, were, are really impressed with the quantity of rice that I can consume every day. <laughs> um, this is, for instance, a graphic showing uh, the destruction of elephant in five regions of Cameroon. You will see that uh, the area devastated is huge. For instance, it's the far north, you have almost, you have more than 200 hectares destroyed. This is the data from 2008, also in the north province. But if uh, we do the same exercise, but we don't have the data yet, if we do the same exercise in the forest area, as I said, you will see that it is the reverse. The area which are very low in terms of destruction will become high if we consider the great ape. It means that in the south area and the east, we'll have mostly uh, conflict, human-wide conflict related to great ape, which means we have to, to consider strongly the great ape in the forest area. Uh, the origin, we, we said it since yesterday, the forest is degraded. Uh, in Cameroon, forest degradation is around 1%. Uh, but 1%, we will say this is nothing, but Keep in mind that uh, the Congo Basin Forest is huge. So if you, you, you make a projection in the total forest area, you will see that the, the, the degradation is really important. Uh, one origin is also the subsistence and commercial hunting. In fact, poaching in Cameroon is uh, important. We have trans, uh, transboundary uh, protected area. Uh, but as I raised the other day, I think that uh, the way that protected area have been managed so far is not really efficient and you have uh, poaching going on in protected area. Um, something else I can say for protected area, uh, I don't see that it is realistic to say in 10, 10 years we have to reach 30% of the national ter territory set as protected area because what you have to do first is to well maintain the existing before doing such a, a projection. Uh, problem related to human wildlife conflict. Uh, we can raise the poor legal and regulatory provision uh, because if you read the forestry law, you will see that there is no provision concerning human wildlife conflict. They just have like two sentences saying that in case a farmer is affected, they will consider it as um, a damage in connection to the, a public investment. And normally when they say a public investment, it means that they don't have to compensate you at the level of the damage. This is the only provision we have in the forestry code. Uh, one problem is also the weak implication of local community, no clear approach for compensation scheme, I raise it, and weak institutional coordination. 
because even other ministry have the feeling that you know wildlife belong to solely the ministry of forestry and wildlife they don't see it as a public good they don't see the forest as a public good even wildlife uh, you know weaving the forest area it means that when you when a farmer is facing uh, a conflict related to to the wildlife they will say that okay go to the ministry of forestry agent to solve the problem which is not fair because normally if it is something related to uh, let's say damage related to your agricultural area the ministry of agriculture has also to be part of the the solution so proposed solution to improve the conflict increase community participation in finding solution to human wildlife conflict improve the legal framework in terms of uh, compensation and law enforcement law enforcement because i raise uh, poaching going on in in this area increase community participation in land use planning and environmental education move towards dynamic land use plan most of the time uh, when a protected area is uh, already set up and they come to realize that it is not realistic because it is poorly managed uh, even in terms of uh, uh, you know wildlife importance uh, we cannot really say that it's still a protected area. So what do we do? We, we just have to disclassify it as a protected area. Instead of restraining the community to go there and have a minimum activity. Or another possibility, for instance, is to set it as a community hunting zone. I will show you the graph where, you know, uh, community are getting, you know, good revenue in terms of managing a community hunting zone. Increased community benefit in protected area is also one of the solutions. Uh, the weak coordination, which I just mentioned, will, will improve with the, with the Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife. Use the right initiative as an opportunity to reduce wildlife conflict. In fact, we have uh, some right initiative, particularly in uh, the uh, trinational between uh, Congo, uh, Central African, no, Congo, Gabon, and Cameroon. It is uh, a red funded project by EU. Uh, there will be a railway crossing almost the whole forest region going to the coast, and they have a red component there because the railway will, you know, will pass through potential uh, great ape sites. Integration of local people center approach. Uh, CAP contribution in land use planning and land use zoning in two transnational uh, forest landscape. Other opportunity we have a functional gorilla, gorilla sanctuary not far from the capital city. I mean, I think we can also capitalize on that. New project with great ape consideration. Uh, there is a big dam which is which is going to be constructed in the East Province and which will also affect great ape habitat and we think that uh, this is also an opportunity really to to solve the situation at least to consider with to have a strong consideration on great ape conservation in that site the preemption right devoted to local community here uh, the law said the law says if uh, there is a conflict in terms of using a site between a, a one, the private sector and the local community, they give the priority to local community. This could be also used, and this has been currently used even by the local community, mostly uh, for, to lock, but they don't actually use it mostly for a community hunting zone, but it is an opportunity. Uh, new initiative, we have uh, a new initiative, the Model Forest, uh, which actually is trying to reduce conflict between different actors. I think this is also an opportunity to, to, to take for uh, resolving human-wildlife conflict. Uh, promising management, I, I raise the fact that community and in fact, even this morning in my group, I was insisting in uh, 
you know, uh, the result we can get if we have appropriate, uh, you know, implication of local community uh, of what we have been discussing for the past two days. And this is an example of, uh, you know, the, how the community have been managing community hunting zone in the southeast. If you see in the graph, you will realize that, you know, the, uh, they, they made quite good benefit. Huh? For instance, we have the peak here, more than 45 million uh, per year, particularly in 2005 into, and in 2009. Here we can explain this maybe by the crisis, the general world crisis. Uh, and most of the fund that the community gets here is uh, affected to social investment, such as, you know, they build schools, they, they build health center, and they even give some scholarship to students at the university. Uh, we, we have the feeling that this social approach, you know, this participatory approach, allow the community to have a good feeling towards uh, wildlife, including Great Ape, and this is something uh, we, we could capitalize. Okay, that is the end, but my question here is, if you are this woman and you got your farm destroyed like this by an, any endangered species, what will you do? Over to you.